So much of the progress we've been talking about during this year's summit wouldn't have been possible without the support of policymakers in Congress. Us Against Alzheimer's is fortunate to have strong working relationships with members of both political parties in both houses of Congress, many of whom have become champions of our cause. This is a bipartisan effort. One of those leaders is Shelley Moore Capito of West Virginia. She's been the lead sponsor of the Change Act uh, with Senator Stabenow of Michigan uh, from the beginning. She's also a strong advocate for research and is the ranking member of the Senate Appropriations Subcommittee that funds HHS and its important National Institutes of Health. She's well positioned to help ensure the agency has the resources to build on its important work. As someone who is a caregiver to both of her parents who lived with Alzheimer's disease, Senator Capito sees the issue from both the caregiver perspective and the policy perspective and uses those perspectives to inform everything she does. Senator Capito, thank you so very much for joining us today. I would uh, love to hear your reasons for your motivation in this space. Well, I think it's quite simply the two parents that raised me. Uh, I saw actually both of them decline uh, in their later years in different ways. Uh, my mother, much more gradually, her mother had had the same issues, and so she could almost feel it coming on. Kept saying, uh, Shelley, I'm losing my mind. And uh, it, it, very difficult for her because she could see where she was going to end up. My father, much more dramatically, um, he was a more dramatic guy anyway. And uh, so both of them ended up in severe dementia and Alzheimer's in the last four years of their lives. And then the three of us children tried to figure out the way to care for them in the best way. Uh, but the most frustrating thing was for me, I, I, I wanted to pick up a book and say, when this happens, do this. And Alzheimer's is not that type of disease. And so that is my total motivation. I promised myself, to, if I, when I get in a position to help, I'm going to go all, you know, as, as far out as I can to make sure families don't go through what, what we went through and what our, my parents went through in sort of the dark of not knowing what their futures were. Well, I'm sorry for your loss of your parents. You know, Roy Blunt, who sat in this chair, right. uh, this organizational chair that you're now sitting in, always spoke about how the cost of care to Medicare and Medicaid uh, by the early 2040s would exceed the Defense Department budget. Uh, and that, in part, was his motivation as well. And I'm curious as to whether you have that fiscal sense about the costs to America, both Medicare and Medicaid, and to American families as well, a result absolutely. of this disease. Uh, the, the, the monetary costs are enormous. Uh, I know what we went through trying to find caregivers and then moving them to a dementia unit. Uh, my parents had planned, and, and we were lucky. But still, you don't, uh, you know, you have other issues of getting people to and from the doctor, making sure that they're taking their medications on time, nutritional issues. And, and so uh, I, I can see that in my own family and as the baby boomer generation, as we're aging, you know, we're going to be in the same boat. I, I don't think, you know, there's no cure there. There are great developments lately. And so I think that the, the way this is going to bust the budget through Medicare and Medicaid is just uh, staggering. And so I believe Roy's right. By the time we get to 2040, we're going to see enormous challenges in our budget. We're, we're the second largest budget now uh, in HHS, uh, HHS uh, second to the Department of Defense. I uh, uh, ran into a senator this morning by accident uh, coming here uh, who just lost a father uh, to Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious as to whether you're finding uh, members of the Senate, your colleagues, are finding this with their parents. No doubt, no doubt. Uh, I, actually, when my parents began their journey, I was in the House of Representatives and Representative um, Ileana Ross Leighton, same exact situation. And you know, there's a, it was a, a built in support group for me. And then I know Todd's lost his uh, father. Also, Roger Wicker is very active in this because of his personal connection. I, I would say probably over half of us have personal motivations to want to try to join together to fight this. We did some polling earlier this year uh, in connection with uh, the Medicare issues, uh, mm -hmm. which I'll come to in a second. 
and found that half of voting age Americans say they've had it in their family or with a close friend. It is personal to the American people as it is personal to you and to your colleagues. So uh, uh, we're thankful for your support and your motivation. Right. Uh, uh, too bad that you had that motivation, uh, but thank you for acting as a child and uh, as a caregiver. Mm -hmm. um, as you know, early detection and diagnosis is very important in this disease. Uh, and you have been a co-sponsor, uh, the lead co-sponsor, uh, for the CHANGE Act. So I am interested in hearing your description of that act and what you hope to accomplish with it. Well, the CHANGE Act is a bipartisan, bicameral bill. And it's simply based on early detection and that first welcome to Medicare exam that is covered by Medicare um, that, that, said, that encouraged the doctors uh, to do that cognitive test, to, to dig deeper than what they do uh, presently in their initial examination. And we know these are not easy types of conversations to have, but we know in the end, uh, planning for your future is gonna make, is gonna make the best sense. So this would uh, also set up a payment model for, to uh, not just encourage, but to pay the, care, uh, the doctors for, uh, for moving forward with this early detection, early diagnosis tools. And, and I think it makes good sense. It comes at a good time and, you know, 65 is a good time in somebody's life to start looking at that and, uh, and, to, and to try to make decisions. Well, as you know, these uh, emerging drugs, uh, one now been approved by the FDA and another hopefully by the end of the year, mm -hmm. uh, are targeted at the very earliest stages of the disease. So I, that's why I would have thought and I do think that the CHANGE Act is so important because uh, the earlier we detect this disease, the more likely it is that we'll find something that will slow it down or stop it. So I'm You know, somebody really framed this really well for me. It was not so, it's, you know, to get that early detection and then to be able to access the drugs that kind of, that will plateau you, not heal you at this point. Uh, but it's that bridge to the next uh, discovery that will heal you. And, and so I, I, I think of it like not just a way to kind of ease you on through the journey that you're going through, but ease you to the next bridge. And, and I think that's an exciting way for me to look at this. And, you know, the prescriptions and, and hopefully those will start coming through as people get on registries. I'm working with Senator Stabenow on this. We're hoping to get it uh, maybe on the end of an end of the year bill. It, as I said, it's nonpartisan. Uh, people are very, very excited about the discoveries that we see. And we've been really pushing HHS to be more reasonable in the approach that they've looked at this and to realize that breakthroughs are meant to be embraced and they're supposed to be for everybody. And I'm from a rural area and this is a real issue for us. So I'm glad to see that they've um, changed the way they've looked at some of these well, I'm things. I'm excited to hear you think that we might be able to put this on a year-end bill if we get to a year-end bill. Well, that's the big question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so um, uh, we this year, as you know, with respect to the first drug uh, from Biogen uh, last year, uh, Medicare had decided that they weren't going to cover uh, these early uh, disease-modifying drugs. Uh, but then this year they changed their posture. Uh, uh, and it took a fairly heavy lift from Congress, of which you were a significant player in that effort, uh, to get Medicare to change their view. I'm curious as to how you saw that, how you see that, and whether that you thought was a, ended up being a good result. Well, let's look at the evolution of some of these uh, drugs and, and, and some of the um, difficulties that we've, been, that we've gone through to try to get to this drug that actually had such great results in their trials and uh, really breakthroughs. We haven't been able to, we haven't been able, this was the first time we've been able to embrace something. So I didn't, I, I would not have wanted to be Senator or Secretary Becerra when he <laughs> sat in the chair at the Appropriations Committee and really got his hat handed to him by Senator Collins and me and others saying, you've got to change your posture on it. Then we joined with letters and then we got, you know, bipartisan buy-in here. So, you know, it was an all hands on deck kind of an effort and they listened and, and we're very grateful for that. No, it, it is remarkable how there ends up being in Washington sometimes, while they can be contentious, there are conversations that occur uh, between members of the executive branch and members of Congress that actually move the needle. So. Right, it gave us an opportunity uh, to really weigh in with him and I think he was caught a little bit by surprise, r realizing the passion and also the fortitude with which 
we felt very strongly about this. So I, uh, I thank him for listening and also making the changes. Well, he did. Uh, so uh, we narrowly avoided a government shutdown mm -hmm. a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and we still have the possibility of a government shutdown sometime in November. How in the heck, uh, uh, what in the heck happens uh, to appropriations, uh, to the prospect of uh, getting more uh, funding for Alzheimer's research, should that occur? Well, I mean, I, I think a shutdown is a road to nowhere. It's a total disservice to every American citizen, and uh, I hope we avoid that at all costs. In terms of what, what we see in our appropriations bill for the research at NIH, we've got an extra $100 million in there for this specifically and uh, spread to, into two different sort of buckets. Mm -hmm. So it's important to me that we follow through with that. But we can't do that unless we get that specific bill all across the finish line. And this bill happens to be very difficult because it is such a large bill. But that doesn't mean we're not going to, you know, keep trying. And, and so we have, we have our work cut out for us. Uh, we have a good leaders in Senator Murray and Senator Collins who are head of the Appropriations Committee. They're committed to having these bills onto the floor for discussion. And, you know, I'm going to lead the charge with Tammy Baldwin as the chair of my subcommittee. And we are both very much invested in this for, um, for the Alzheimer's research par portion, particularly at NIH. This has been one of those few things that we see from the outside is very much nonpartisan, not just bipartisan, but nonpartisan. Uh, so I am curious as to why you think that it, this is one of those things that is bringing people together. Well, I think it's, uh, it's the plain fact that so many people are affected by it. As you said early, you, the, the poll that you said showed so many people had someone in their family. If they're not in their family, they're in their church or they know somebody. Mm -hmm. I wanted our children to see uh, what was happening with their grandparents because I want them to be able to teach their children how to care and love and, and, and be with their aging uh, grandparent if they have dementia to sort of understand it and not shut it away from them and, and, and make it seem like something that they didn't they were afraid of or anything. That's, that's kind of what my parents did with me, with my grandmother. And, and there's a lot of love that's still left uh, for, for people who are as they're aging like that. So I think we all we have heart experiences like that. And I think it's just hitting so many people. That's why you see it's reflected in the Congress. We are representatives, and so we're representative of that. I was always struck by Ronald Reagan when he finally got a diagnosis mm -hmm. of Alzheimer's, who immediately went to the other room and wrote a letter to the American people. Uh, um, because it takes a degree of courage to admit that uh, you have a disease of your brain because, in fact, people can be stigmatized uh, and can be hidden away. Right. But his courage was quite striking, uh, and it's a, it's a piece of sort of behavior that I hope many, many, many more Americans would do. Talk about it. Right. Be out about it. And as you say, you can live with joy and with happiness for so many years with the disease, even as you are experiencing the disease. Right. I just read his letter. I was out at the presidential library mm -hmm. and read his letter. It was very moving for me, my personal experience. I remember the picture of him sitting on that park bench that they showed when they mm -hmm. uh, released his letter. And uh, yeah, he, he had a way with of just ending in an optimistic sense. And so we have a lot of breakthroughs. We're doing a lot of work at West Virginia University on at the uh, neurological Rockefeller Neurological Institute there uh, on how the brain is working and amyloid and all those things. So I, I'm hoping that we can be a player as part of the cure of the disease. Well, you certainly have been and are and will be, uh, Senator. So we so deeply appreciate all of, all of your efforts. So um, on behalf of Us Against Alzheimer's, the entire Alzheimer's community, we thank you uh, so much for your leadership uh, on this issue. So well, thank you, George, for what you're doing and oh. have done. This is a team sport. This is, that's a good thing to end on. It's a team sport. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Uh, and now I'll turn things back over to Russ Paulson, our Chief Operating Officer, for some final thoughts before we close out this year's summit. Thank you all for being with us.